Yesterday, a friend asked me if I could talk a little bit about depression because I'm one person out there who talks very publicly about dealing with clinical depression. You might not be experiencing clinical depression. You might be experiencing kind of situational depression because of things going on. But it's not mine to decide which is which. Um, Mine was diagnosed. And I want to share some stuff with you. I am in no way any kind of a medical professional. My name's Chris Brogan. I have absolutely no credentials. I'm a guy who deals with depression. But if this is helpful for you, I want you to just listen to me for a little bit. And again, just take the parts that are useful to you and chuck the rest out, okay? That's where I want to start. If, if someone's sent you this, by the way, to talk to you about, you know, I know you're kind of dealing with some depression now. I get it. Preaching doesn't help anybody. When anyone's trying to help me get out of my depression, I'm always like, yeah, do you help uh, diabetic people get out of their diabetes? Mine's chemical. I need a medicine to get out of it. But there are world situations that can certainly make depression happen and dietary stuff and all that. But preaching never helps. When you are down in it, that is rarely a time when you want to be pulled out. You know, we come out at our own pace and people don't get that. You know, you are running your own race. That is the first thing I need you to know. You are running your own race with this. And by running, you and I are laying in bed thinking, wow, if I can get a shower today, that would be better than yesterday, right? You're running your own race. It's okay. Don't feel nuts about it. It's okay. Next, it's okay to feel extra slow. I tell people all the time that depression feels like you're driving in your car, but you've accidentally left the parking brake on. Everything is slower. Everything takes more time. I've got a tip for you about that. If you know that's going to be true, then try to chunk up stuff. If you have to get some things done, learn what you can drop. We'll talk about that a little more later. But also chunk up the stuff that you're doing so that you're not having to work on it in this long, draggy, sloggy way. Everything's going to take longer. I'll tell you my secret trick. I have a ladybug. And my ladybug is a timer. You know, a little egg timer and it's physical. It's real world. I don't use one on a laptop. I like the actual sound and the physical because you can get lost in your computer or your phone. But I make things in 20 minute clips because besides holding my breath, I can do most anything for 20 minutes, right? So make yourself a little timer and that way you can, you can, things are going to feel extra slow. When you're dealing with depression, I think the first two important things to give yourself are acceptance and permission. Acceptance doesn't mean that you approve. It's not the same word as approve. Accept means I completely accept that this is what's going on right now. Bad things could happen in your life. I accept that my significant other has left me, whatever the thing is, right? I accept that the world is in a bad place. It doesn't mean you approve. It just means you get it. You're there. I accept that this is what's it, what's what. And I don't, this is not the time to pile on the other negative things you're thinking. You just accept it. Permission means, and now I'm going to grant myself permission. If it takes me a while to get back to where I want to be, I'm going to give myself permission for that. If I'm not doing 100%, if I'm not even doing 50%, I give myself permission to not do 50%. So acceptance and permission are really important. By the way, I wrote you a little cheat sheet. I'm going to put it on chrisbrogan.com slash cheat sheet. chrisbrogan.com slash cheat sheet. No downloader. I mean, no, uh, you don't have to fill anything out. You just get the file, okay? chrisbrogan.com slash cheat sheet. And listen, next piece, this is related to my 20-minute thing. Small bites and baby steps. That's what gets us going again. Small bites and baby steps. Dr. Robert Brooks talks about micro moments, right? I'm not going to have to worry about if I feel good all day. I'll just feel good right now. I'll watch my 3000th YouTube video and go, oh, that one was funny, right? Whatever it is, small bites, little baby steps. Everything has got to be smaller in depression. Everything's got to fit in a backpack. It doesn't have to fill your house, right? It's got to be small. Depression is like that. And then you can build off it, right? But the problem is we, you know, Everyone's putting on weight during the pandemic, let's say. Fine, you'll deal with that later, right? But you don't have to deal with it the first day. You don't have to go, oh, crap, I've got to lose 11 pounds. Whatever you gained, I've probably gained a whole COVID-19. It's fine. It's fine. Just small bits. 
Next, the best cure that I have found for myself, and this is not, this is me just talking about me again. This is not professional advice. The best cure that I found for myself is I, you know, if I can help some other people a little bit, like make you a video and a little cheat sheet, if I can help others a little bit, it gets me out of looking at my own belly button because depression sometimes, you know, we can feed it, right? And we can feed it the thing it most wants, which is us to feel worse. And that's the emotional part of depression. There's a chemical part. I can't help it. You know, if I'm feeling, you know, the best day of my life, I could still be feeling depression. I'm dealing with depression now. 20 minutes ago, I just laughed harder than I've laughed in a month. I still feel depression, right? But sometimes we feed our depression too, right? Sometimes it's, ugh. and by the way, let's go back to permission and acceptance. It's okay to do that sometimes. But then that's like depression masturbation, right? Like that's, you're not trying to undepress. You're just, I want to feel this painful thing. Like when you cut your mouth and you put your tongue in it like a hundred times, that's that. So you can have a little, but just not a lot. So doing something for somebody else is a really helpful way to get out of it. It could be something super small. It can be calling old people at a senior home who haven't had any contact with people lately. It could be uh, uh, helping out people who are uh, suddenly everyone's a homeschooler. So maybe you can help with the skill, you know, that kind of a thing. Right. Or it could be something smaller like baking cookies and then eating them all unless you send them to me and then I'll eat them all for you. Doing something or contributing in some way matters a great deal. Humankind's greatest needs is to feel wanted. One of the other core needs in us is to feel that we're somehow doing our part. We need to make a difference. This matters to humans. And when you're dealing with depression, one of the stories that depression tells you is that you know, nothing you do matters, nothing you do is important, it's all a lie, it's all bullshit. Depression is a liar, by the way. It's trying to help. There's actually some science that says that the, the, the things that you say when you're dealing with depression are trying to help you, but it's, it's not, it's really bad help. It's like when your parents say, I'm just trying to be, a, what's their expression they always use? I'm trying to be a realist here. That's parent for I don't uh, believe in your skills. And they maybe don't, but what's awesome about other humans that aren't you is that you get to prove them wrong. And boy, I sure have. My parents have been very supportive, but I'm saying in general, people who don't believe in me usually get to see some examples of me doing better things. And they get to see me fail too, but that's for another whole day. Lastly, and this is so important, this goes back to Dr. Robert Brooks, who's written some amazing books on resilience and is a very nice man. I know him personally. Definitely anything he's written about resilience is worth you picking up on your Amazon Kindle. Uh, everything works better if you can connect. Resilient people use their network. 100% of people surveyed in dealing with their depression also connected with someone else. Now, I hear some people's depression saying, I don't have anyone. I don't mean some massive significant other, some lover, something like that. I mean just someone else. Just someone else. It's okay. It could be a friend. It could be a temporary friend. It could be a total stranger. You know, I, I want to tell you this totally random thing that is also not in any way science or medicine. A lot of people are playing the Nintendo Switch game Animal Crossing, and it is getting them through their depression. Uh, it is just because it's small chores. It's all small bites. It's everything I just said in my video um, in a video game. So that'll give you a sense. And they're connecting with virtual things. Now, that's not really a good substitute for humans. We do need to connect with humans. But look, start wherever you are. I made this video for you because I know that you might be dealing with some things. And maybe it's easy to just listen in for a minute and it'd be helpful. If none of it helped, that's okay. Not, it, it's not one size fits all. You know that. If some of it helped, great. If you want to talk with me, I'm always open for a talk. Chris at chrisbrogan.com is my email. Find me on Twitter, Chris Brogan, anywhere you want. Wherever you want to have the conversation, I'm there for you, okay? Not necessarily face-to-face, -face, but you know, most of the other ones. I hope you make it through the way that you need to. I'm, you don't need to get better soon. Get, do what you want to do. Get what you have to get done, right? But just know that I know. I've dealt with it. I've felt it. I'm feeling it right now. I'm here, Chris at chrisbrogan.com. Go to chrisbrogan.com slash checklist if this is helpful to you. All right, I'll talk to you later.